Hey everyone, Adrian here over at the Sample List, and today we're going to take a look at Aurora, a textured piano from the good folks over at UVI. This library is a powerful and distinctly modern interpretation of the piano, augmenting the factory presets of some select sounds from today's most innovative piano artists, including Julia Geertsen, Ben Crosland, Akira Kozumura, Joe Kirby, Oli Bjorn Talstad, Arvind Holst and Dustin O'Halloran. Aurora uses three discrete sonic signatures to make it sound, a concert grand piano, a dual layer texture engine and an atmosphere layer. Each layer is editable, allowing you to truly sculpt evocative and creative sounds. Aurora weighs in at just 4.45 gigabytes using FLAC lossless encoding with 211 presets and over 8,000 samples. The samples were recorded at 88.2 kHz before being downsampled to 44.1. You get three activations per license on any combination of machines or just loading it up into your iLock dongle. Aurora runs in the UVI workstation version 3.1.11 or higher, and you can also use Falcon version 2.8.5 or higher. And I'm going to use the Falcon uh, interface to actually demonstrate Aurora in this video. Supported on both Mac and PC, you will need 4GB of RAM as a minimum, with a recommended 8GB for large sound banks. Priced at $129, you can pick up your copy today over at uvi.net. So let's hear some sounds from Aurora.
Now we've heard what the Aurora sounds like, let's take a tour through the interface. At the top we have the preset menu and you can either select the presets by clicking on here and choosing the preset you want. We've just got, got Concert Grand loaded up at the moment or you can navigate on the side menu here. We also have the three separate page views. We've got the main, we've got edit and effects, which we'll get to eventually. We then have the settings button here, which allows you to change your MIDI curve, the number of note polyphony, pitch bend, balance, and what how the sustain pedal uh, reacts. I like to have it on, on a piano. As a piano player, it uh, makes a bit more sense for me. We then have the motion button in the middle, which turns the motion on and off. To get to the motion page, just click on the name, motion, and it sends you back there. And we just need to click on main to get back. And then we have these performance macros at the bottom. We have a color, which changes the tonal color based on the JSON sample. So if I just play a few notes and give you a little whiz through. So it sort of like takes it from light to dark there. We have the dynamic uh, dial here, which is just the dynamic response. That's a bit harder. That's a bit softer. Then we have uh, the, the mute one, which is slightly interesting because it adjusts the length limitation of the samples. So if I play. So you get a more staccato -y effect. So you can start getting to sort of like synth type plucky sounds quite very qu quickly there. Um, we then have intensity. Now the intensity adjusts the overall intensity of the performance as it says on the tin there. So we have. So it's another way of making your sound brighter and darker. We then have an effects chain list here. So this allows you just to load up an, a pre-programmed effects chain. So if I say, let's go for seventh blue, and we get this now. So straight away you can take your sound somewhere completely different very quickly. And then we have the mix, which is the wet dry mix for the effects chain, and the limiter adjusts the um, the sort of threshold for the maximizer and that's built in so i'm just going to reload the concert grand so we're back to normal now the, the sort of when i played you may have actually seen these light up and these actually tell you what keys you're playing so c c sharp d d sharp e f f sharp g a flat a b flat B. So it just sort of gives you a representation of what keys we're actually playing, which is a, sort of a nice graphical touch. So let's go straight into the motion editor by clicking on motion. You can just power it on and then click on the name motion. Now this is UVI's take on the arpeggiator sequencer that you see in quite a lot of instruments. Now these modes here, they sort of like speak for themselves. You've got played up, down, chord, and then special. Now played, that will play the notes on your MIDI controller in the order you've actually played them. So if I play a normal C minor chord, so it's going to play it through an octave range there. We also have UVI's take on what is the sort of, you've probably seen as chaos or random on different arpeggiators. Theirs is known as special, so it'll just play the notes in random. You also can change the speed of the sequence there as normally, so your eighth notes, etc. You've got your host sync, so if you've got the metronome on there, that's sync to host. If you want to just not sync it to host, then just turn it off and you can change your speed independently. Do it one shot all the way through, change the relative velocity of the actual sound, so you this is sort of like a starting point, so if I turn it right up. So the higher it is, 
the softer the sound, which is slightly backwards to the way you would think a dial would work. But there we go. And then you can change your steps there all the way through to 32. And then you've got the little toggles here that move the steps on. So that last step here, if I move that, that goes to the beginning and so on and so on forth. You can then target this sequencer to each of the layers you want. So you can target to all three or just the piano. And then you've got still got your macros at the bottom that you had on the main screen. So that's the motion area. So we'll just nip back to the main screen. If I just turn motion off, you know, let me go back to main. It should let me go back to main. There we go. Click on motion again. So little tip is if you want to go back to the main screen, just click on motion and it takes you back to the main screen. Now I want to edit some layers here. So if I go into uh, piano and just select on the name. So anything that's highlighted, it means you're in that page really. And in here we can change the mics. So we can turn on a close mic, cinematic mic, uh, mono mic. Somewhat does mono do. So that gives you more intimate sound than mono. So I'll just leave close mic on first of all. And then you can change the global gain for everything there and assign it to a mod wheel, an LFO. So you can alter the gain by LFO or, or a mod wheel. Again, your pitch you can modulate with those sources. This is changing your dynamics and the smoothness. So that gives more realism, the smooth there really. Then you can change the release, the resonance and the pedal sound as well. Uh, so if I use my sustain pedal, can't really hear it playing, but if I turn it up, yeah, I can. And the same with the keys. And then we can change the tone. So make it brighter, it's like an EQ. And then you can change the um, attack, decay, sustain and release of the actual sound. Then we have your LFO, which I was saying before, you can actually map to either the gain or the pitch here. Um, and you also can change the frequency with your model wheel as well. So there's a lot of modulation options there. So that's your first LFO. If you want two LFOs, just click on enable and you can then map those to these different controls. So that's what you get in the piano layer. Moving on to texture, I'm just going to uh, mute the piano layer and then go into texture and bring textures on. So that's what the texture does, it just sort of adds something sort of like, um, well as I said, it's texture really, because if I, if I change it to jockeys we get this. So it's like adding a little bit of um, different attack, something different to the attack stage, you know, the sound of the attack. So I'll just turn the gain up on that and we can hear it better. And then if I changed it to, I don't know, let's say a camera. I'll bring a piano with it, we get this sound. So it just sort of has something different to the attack stage of it. And we've got layers A and B, so we can change, have sort of two different um, attack type sounds to it. That adds a texture to that piano, original piano. And again, we have the gain, the dynamic width, smooth, exactly the same as what we have on the, on the piano page, really just you can all just change the stereo <coughs> stereo width of the sound and then you can modulate your gain 
you can make it monophonic or polyphonic and you can track the sound to pitch or pan so if you want the sound to be the same up and down the keyboard in other words not pitched then just turn that down that goes it backwards if I turn it all the way up if I turn it all the way up we've got exactly the sound same pitch on every single key you can then shape the tone uh, just like a, an EQ really there just to shape the tone a bit more and then obviously you've got the LFOs at the bottom so that you can map to the gain here so that's the texture section moving on to atmosphere if we just enable atmosphere this is like an instrument in itself really because if I put synth brass on you've got all these sources that sort of give something different to the sound so UVI have really gone to town with this because I'm not sure I've heard another instrument that actually where you could play the atmosphere as an instrument in itself it's sort of better combined whereas these you can actually you can actually use in isolation but if I put them with a piano I'll turn the gain down again now So you get the uh, sound coming through of the analog strings very faintly in the background. And again, we can modulate the gain and the pitch of the actual sound source for the atmosphere. And then shape it with the EQ and change the attack, decay, sustain and release for that particular layer. Okay, we're almost there because we're now going to move to the effects section. Before I do, I just want to actually reload the concert grand. That's it, we're back to normal. Um, so what we have here is a distortion drive section, a tone which is just one knob uh, at the moment, and then if you get flanger you can change these across, but it, it presets it to tone first of all here, but you can actually select the type of series of effects that you want in order so we'll go from left to right so I can put drive on and drive gives me the ability to put a tube a diode or a digital so it just sort of like drives the sound a bit more and takes the distortion tone so it allows you to do simple EQ of um, dark to light sounds there we have a sort of granular We can have a chorus as well. You, your ubiquitous delay sound that you have in lots of instruments. Uh, I want to mix up a bit. So that's a diffuse delay. If I'd have put a velvet on. And then we have the reverb at the end, which gives you the parametric hall, cathedral, plate, spring, surreal. And if you go into the second uh, preset list, you have different types of hall. So if I go, go to cathedral, I can have a basilica, an abbey, a chapelle, a cloister or a monastery. A surreal, we've got dragonfly. Let's go for a phone. And then you've got your EQ at the bottom of three band EQ to play around with. So that's the Aurora interface. Let's hear what this sounds like in a composition context.
Okay, so a very short composition, uh, just showing what this library can do. We're just using just the sounds from this library. What this was built upon was a pad sound that we came across, which is Arctic Wind and the pad. And then if we put the pad on, and we have this. And if I combine them, we have this nice, sort of like soft, dreamy pad sound. Now what I wanted to do then is just add some dirt and grit to it and the easiest way to do it was with this bass sound of thunder. So already atmospheric. Now the piano sound, we did the concert grand and on its own it sounds okay but in the mix it gets a bit lost so we needed to double it so I use a concert grand and another preset called treasure. So as you see, it adds more weight to the sound, doing the nice bright concert grand with the deep dark sort of treasure sound. So this is more muted the treasure because it uses uh, the felt piano t sound in there. Now to move things along, we brought in Chernobyl, which is like a sequence. And then we brought in a second sequence, which was Cloud Ballet. Now, I do, did like this actual sound. Cloud Ballet is really nice. Aurora. As a keen astronomer, that name just evokes all sorts of images. And with this library, you can recreate them in sound. This library has a beautiful and detailed sound captured at the renowned Guillem Tell Sound Studio in Paris. There's a number of texture based pianos out there, but this one has, for me, something actually different, and I don't say that light heartedly. I hope this came out as you listened to the patch walkthrough and then the composition that followed. What we have here are a number of parameters for each layer that allows you to tweak and shape your design that can be as a piano like as you want or Go to the extreme of the spectrum and become the most unpiano like sound you can imagine. The sheer number of textures and atmospheres gives you more ways to give you sound that unique edge, something to stand out from the very, very crowded crowd. There's over 100 of these textures and atmospheres to play with to add to your sound palette, so there's going to be something there that makes your sound truly unique. I really enjoyed playing with this library. And as a pianist, it's always interesting to see and hear what developers come up with. And UVI has certainly come up with a different twist on this theme of textured pianos. We would like to thank UVI for sending over a copy to review. And you dear viewers, thank you for watching. If you want to know more about us, visit sasamplist.com for more information. Subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you in the next one.